tarnished, are we? Come to the lands between for the Elden Ring? Hmm? Of course you have. No shame in it. Unfortunately for you, however, you are maidenless. Keep my maidens name out your fucking mouth! Are you serious? <laughs> oh, wow! Wow! Will Smith just smacked the shit out of me. This video contains spoilers for Vare's questline and the late game area of the Mogwin dynasty. Turn back now, ye tarnished, lest ye be spoiled. <sighs> White Mask Vare is an enigma. Vare, without the acute E, is Portuguese and could mean sweep, wipe out, scavenge, brush, clean, or broom. Perhaps most interesting of these is scavenge and clean. His design suggests a cleanliness that has been bloodied, much like the pure finger maidens he has murdered. Cold and calculating, intelligent and manipulative, Vare always seems to be one step ahead of the tarnished until the very end of his questline. My fellow tarnished, this is the face of a man who knows more than he's letting on. Vare is likely why you are maidenless, and here's why. When we first spawn into the game, we start in the Chapel of Anticipation. After we die for the first time, likely to the Grafted Scion, White Mask Vare is the first NPC we talk to. The first comment Vare makes is noting that you are a tarnished looking for the Elden Ring. The second is... Unfortunately for you, however, you are maidenless. Before we get any further, it's important to note exactly what a maiden is. The Finger Maiden set, found in the Church of Inhibition, has the description, Worn by maidens who serve the two fingers. The maidens live to serve a chosen tarnished sharing their guidance and the wisdom of the two fingers. The guidance of grace would ensure that the pair be brought together, or at least, such was the promise long ago. Being maidenless effectively means we are without guidance, and as mentioned by Melina, we cannot turn our runes to strength. Theoretically, this leaves us powerless. Vare being stood at the first place we end up is rather odd. There is nothing much to gain for him here, unless perhaps he has also made a similar journey as us, or he is waiting for us, but more on that later. But now, we return back to Vare. Vare sends us to kill Godric in Stormvale Castle. He mentions this is to gain access to the Round Table Hold once we gain Godric's Great Rune. It is quite curious that Vare knows so much about the Round Table Hold. He knows not only that it would be beneficial to us, but he also knows that the two fingers are in a chamber closed away to those who have not yet proved themselves, in this case by defeating a shard bearer. After reaching the round table, he does indeed reinforce the idea for you to join the round table hold and kill Godric the Grafted. He also lets on that he knows about the dragon that Godric wishes to graft onto himself. This is quite curious. For him to know the inner workings of Godric's castle, leads me to believe that he has worked with Godric before. As a war surgeon, it does make sense he could have once been working with Godric to graft other tarnished. Surgeon would indeed be important in the act of doing something as intricate as grafting. Alongside this, there is a grafted scion at the Chapel of Anticipation. Scion being a word with twofold meaning. It can mean both, one, a young shoot or twig of a plant, especially one cut for grafting or rooting, or two, a descendant of a notable family, Scion being of noble blood, and Vare also likely being the same due to a few of his voice lines, could be evidence that Vare left the Scion for whatever Tarnish to be defeated by. The grafted Scion's purpose is either to slow down the Tarnished, or defeat them so that Vare can manipulate them later. But perhaps this is indeed the entire wrong angle. Perhaps Godric left this grafted scion to get his war surgeon back to him, or maybe even just to get him killed for his betrayal. After killing Godric the Grafted and visiting the Two Fingers in the Round Table Hold, you can return to Varia at the spot you first met him, next to the First Steps Grace. 
he will leave you a message mentioning that he is in the Rose Church in Leonia of the Lakes. Talking to him again, he asks you of your impression of the two fingers. If you answer, they didn't seem right. He commends your intuition and mentions that he himself has had his own doubts in trusting them. He gives us three festering bloody fingers, which allow us to invade other tarnished that we need to use to progress his quest. These fingers read, This furled finger is blackened with blood congestion. It seems to have been chopped off rather unceremoniously. The design of these fingers, due to the long fingernail, suggests they could be from a maiden. However, it is also important to note that after death, mostly due to dehydration, everybody's fingernails and teeth seem to grow. This is, however, in fact, simply due to the flesh receding, and due to this finger being blackened by blood congestion, I believe it is fair to say that this is a very advanced point in rigor mortis. At this point, he has begun to take to us. He almost lovingly calls us lambkin. This can be taken one of two ways. Either he is likening us to a wolf in sheep's clothing, considering the tarnished killing that he is advocating for us to do, or in a completely opposite way. We are but a poor little naive lamb falling into his deception. Once we are done invading other tarnished, we can return to him in Leone of the Lakes at the Rose Church. After talking to him once more, he mentions, mm. I knew it from the very start. You have a taste for noble blood. And then, we are given the option to be anointed as a Knight of Luminary Moog. This process, however, is not an easy one. In order to be anointed, we require the blood of a Finger Maiden. Fare mentions, For your final trial, soak the cloth with a Maiden's blood. Normally this ritual would involve killing one's own Maiden and recanting the wisdom of the two fingers. But since you are maidenless, the blood of anyone's maiden will do. He then gives you the Lord of Blood's favor. The text for it reads, Pure white oath cloth, given to us by Vare, the final trial to be anointed a knight of Moog, Lord of Blood. Soak the cloth with a maiden's blood. The blood of anyone's maiden will do. You are maidenless, after all. After soaking the cloth, this item then changes to fully reddened oath cloth, dyed in a maiden's blood. The final trial is complete. Luminary Moog is sure to welcome you into his service as a knight who will lay the foundations for his dynasty. When looking for finger maidens, you can find four that should work. One in the Church of Inhibition, Ayeta, Irina, but most interestingly, there is indeed a maiden at the Chapel of Anticipation where we start the game. In fact, it makes almost perfect sense for there to be a maiden there waiting for us, a tarnished, to begin our journey. But there is more to this mystery. Now, give me your finger. Vare himself is a tarnished. He mentions that when talking to him about the two fingers. He also mentions that the two fingers are rambling and senile. So it's rather fair to say he was disillusioned by the guiding of grace and the two fingers. But most importantly, he mentions that the Lord of Blood's favour is won by soaking the oath cloth in the blood of your own maiden. This leaves us with one of two conclusions. The dead maiden at the Church of Anticipation is either your own maiden, or less likely, Vare's. With that thought in mind, we are returned to the questline. Returning to Vare once more, he will anoint us in a painful ritual. This noble blood will be an immutable badge of honor once it settles inside of you. <gasps> oh, good heavens. Clench your teeth or something. <laughs> Never forget 
that feeling of agony. For it is what binds you to Luminary Moog, to all of us. <laughs> you have the sweetest scream, my lambkin. This gives us the bloody finger, which allows you to invade any amount of times, and reads, glistening blood has been siphoned into the nail of this finger. Its sickly pale skin feels nothing now, but the nail still aches with the sweetest pain. Finally, he will give you the Pure Blood Knight's medallion, which he mentions, I've gone out of my way to provide one to you, but you mustn't use it just yet. The meeting must wait until the Moguin dynasty commences. And it reads, Proof that one is a glorious knight of the new dynasty of Moguin, that the Lord of Blood will inaugurate. Used to be granted audience with Mog, only it is not yet time, for Moog yet slumbers beside the divinity. Be patient, the new dynasty is nigh. Activating this item will take us to the Mogwin Palace, where we can be invaded by three war surgeons and access the war surgeon set. Each of these pieces read very similarly. The set reads, blood-stained white gown of the war surgeons who were effectively mercy killers of the surgeons that were abducted by the Lord of Blood. None were able to tame the accursed blood, none but Vare, that is, though he was an exception. Note that it mentions that only Vare was able to tame the accursed blood, but also that the surgeons were abducted. This leads me to believe that Vare has been doing this for a while. It seems extremely unlikely he would only be killing his own maiden now, suggesting again that the maiden in the Chapel of Anticipation is likely our own. The War Surgeon set also lends to the thought that Moog's blood cult weren't necessarily all willing at first. They were abducted, which honestly makes perfect sense for the Lord of Blood. But most importantly, it means that Vare is one of a kind besides perhaps the player. He tamed the accursed blood likely blood from the formless mother but we will delve more into what this accursed blood is in our next video about Mo. sadly for vare his love for luminary moog goes unrequited and in the end we tarnished are able to invade him near the Mogwin dynasty mausoleum midpoint site of grace. It is a betrayal to end a questline of betrayal. I would love to say that the cycle ends with us, but as invasions still continue, that is not necessarily the case. After his defeat, Vare lies on the floor and says, Oh, luminary Moog, please grant the strength you promised. I have given everything. Please, my lord, please answer me, Luminary Moog. Uh, 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 bless the Moguin dynasty with love. It truly is a sad end for a sad man, to die alone, unanswered. And from his body, we can loot his bouquet. His bouquet reads, steel mace resembling a charming bouquet of roses. Each petal has a sharp edge, leaving the rose perpetually coloured with blood. This weapon reflects White Mask Vare's manner of speech rather well, enticing in its splendour, but full of deadly consequence. This encapsulates Vare perfectly. Let us run through a possible timeline for Vare given all of this context. Vare starts his journey as a tarnished. He joins the round table, meets the two fingers, and becomes disillusioned with them. He believes they harbour no love for the tarnished, and to some extent, 
he is correct. Barry begins work with Godric, assisting him in grafting alongside other war surgeons. Barry is next kidnapped by Moog, Lord of Blood, likely before or around the same time that Mikola is kidnapped. The Lord of Blood inducts Vare into his cult under the Formless Mother. Vare tames the accursed blood, and here is where two separate possibilities split. Either Vare must kill his own maiden, doing so he then sets out to kill other maidens and assist in bringing other tarnish to his side as Knights of Luminary Moog. Our maiden being the one at the Chapel of Anticipation, which he kills, allows him to easily tell that we are maidenless. Or, Vare kills his own maiden at the Chapel of Anticipation, and happens to find the tarnished along the way, knowing somehow that we are maidenless. Perhaps he finds some sort of kinship in the fact that both of us are maidenless at this point. But now, either way, both possibilities converge. He meets us at the first steps site of grace and sends us to go deal with godric and join the round table he intends to figure out two things first if we are strong enough to join luminary moog by killing godric and second whether we will be just as disillusioned to the two fingers as he was he requires both of these things in order to even consider inducting us into his blood cult after we jump through several hoops he gives us a title and promises a meeting with moog a meeting that will never happen the Tarnished then uses the Knight's Medallion, perhaps finding and defeating Moog along the way, before finally invading Vare so close to the palace of his lord. The Tarnished murders Vare and puts an end to his betrayal with a betrayal. It's almost poetic. Almost. But the mysteries do not stop here. The next video will be on Moog and his grand dynasty, destined to fail from the very beginning. Or perhaps he knew more than we give him credit for. Thank you for watching. If you had any thoughts on this video or about Vare, please feel free to drop a comment down below. I'm excited to hear what you think, whether you killed Vare like I did, or whether you let him live like the poor sad man he is. While you're down there, if you could like, subscribe, hit the bell, it'd be very much appreciated. I know, we've heard it a thousand times, but I gotta say it. Thanks again. And as a great man once said, Feel free to go off and die in a ditch somewhere. Have a wonderful day.